Hello guys. This is a cooking video. So people have been asking, what are you gonna be cooking next? What are you gonna be cooking next? So today is Sunday, Arizona, very hot. When you think about hot, you don't think about soup. But this soup is a very light soup, but filling. And I'm going to make it, it's, it's 10.30, and I'm gonna throw it all in my crock pot and it'll be all cooked up by the time it's dinner time. So let me tell you what I'm making. Today, three things. I always cook three things on Sunday to prep for the week. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing later on is I'm gonna be canning some beets and hard boiled eggs. I got the eggs done, I got the beets cut up, I got the onions ready. So I just gotta prepare my jar. And I'm making a, it's called a summertime minestrone. So I put the crock pot out, love my crock pot, use it all the time. And I put my crock pot out, I put a little bit of butter in there. I've already cut up the onions, not too fine, a little bit chunky. And now I'm cutting up the celery. And um, for the celery, for me personally, I don't like it really, really chunky. Um, but I don't want it to fall apart in the soup. So, nice chunks. I've washed the celery, and then I have celery because I bought some already shredded chicken pre-cooked, and the other thing I'm gonna be making for the week is chicken salad. So, as you all know, and have heard me complain, I work at night, and so because of that, I have to kind of prep ahead of time for the week because I don't always have time to just get out and go shopping. So I'm making the minestrone, summer minestrone soup with chicken broth. This is a different minestrone soup and it has lemon in it. So this might be very refreshing. Plus, you know, when you're hot and you're sweating, you're losing a lot of electrolytes. So the saltiness of it will probably be good. And then I'm gonna make the chicken salad and then I'm gonna jar a jar of hard boiled eggs with beets. For me, they'll have to sit on the shelf for about a good month month and a half before they'll be pickled enough. But that's my, um, that's my goal for today. So again, let's start with what I have in the pot. I have the crock pot. Um, I'm gonna half this because it makes a lot, like they wanted eight cups of chicken broth and we don't, I don't want it to be wasted. So I'm just gonna half it for us. So I've got the onions in there. They're gonna steam down just a little bit before I add my broth. And I'm gonna add my cut up celery. And you can see the chunks are not real big. So I'm gonna reach over here and open my pot. Let them go in there and sweat a little bit. Lord knows I'm sweating, they should sweat too. Okay. In there is also gonna go spinach. I'm not putting the spinach in just yet. Green beans and zucchini. Where is my zucchini? Huh, I'll have to find the zucchini. Oh, it's over here. <laughs> I was like, where did I do my zucchini? And carrots. So, carrots, beans, zucchini, and then little tiny, tiny turkey balls, meatballs. So I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna rinse my beans. I leave them light in the bag. This bag doesn't have any holes in it. So I fill it up with the water. Give it a good shake. And then I just close the top. And drink. Don't get so hard on yourself, baby kids. Now this is a lot of beans. So I'm not gonna use all these beans. Um, I'm gonna put some away for this week. So let's take half of these beans and put them in. And maybe I'll make like a chicken pot pie or something. Look at those over there. I'll put them away in a minute. So the beans, again, I want it to be a hearty kind of soup. And so I'm going to make little cuts of the beans. I try to make them all about the same size so they cook well. Cut the tips off, probably save those for my tortoise, because I don't see her salad's been made yet, so she can get the scraps. 
one. Let's see, it's green beans. I don't think we tried green beans yet. Look. She pretty much eats anything. Even dog poop. Sorry to say that. But it does. And I know this is not very exciting for you, so I'm probably going to turn this off while I finish cutting up these beans. And the beans are going to go right also in the crock pot because beans take a long time. And then but I really want to sweat down the onions and the celery. I, love, I like to get that flavor going. And so let me finish with the beans and the carrots and I'll be back. Okay, so we're at the next spot here. So I cut up zucchini, carrots, beans on the bottom, and there's two bay leaves in here. The celery and the um, onion have kind of softened a little bit, still need some time, but that's okay. So we're gonna put our other vegetables in. And I'm going to, it adds, as for chicken broth, which I am putting the chicken broth in, but to give it just a little bit extra flavor, I have canned some vegetable broth and I do want it to be light. So I'm gonna put some vegetable broth in there too. So the chicken broth is in there. This is my vegetable broth that I made from leftover vegetables. I have to use a can opener to open it because it's sealed. And if you hear that pop, that means it's fine. And that's going into Perfect. All right. Just FYI, you're not supposed to reuse those lids. Um, if it's really not vented up, I will reuse it. It just depends. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna put in here before, uh, before I get going. I'm gonna leave the spinach out because it's gonna wilt anyway quickly. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of oregano in there. Where that came from? Not a whole bunch, just a little bit. And what am I gonna do with the rest of it? If you ever wondered, well, what do you do with the rest of it? I dehydrate it. So I have outside some basil growing that I already dehydrated. That's going in my meatballs and so you can use it again. Don't think, you know, use some fresh stuff. And keep in mind, if you're alone and you live alone and you're like, well, we don't eat that much soup, you can freeze it. There's nothing wrong with that. And then you have it for a rainy day. You come home and you're, you're cold and miserable. You throw it in the... Um, you can go to Costco and get some plastic containers to freeze it in, or just throw it in a bag and freeze it. So oregano is in, and then the last thing I'm gonna throw in there and let it cook for a little bit is salt and pepper. Here's my longer burger. So this is pink Himalayan salt. We like it. And pepper. Ooh, too much pepper. Pepper. That's a very precise amount of calculation there. Okay, I'm gonna stir you guy. And then I'm gonna get the meatballs going here. I'll show you that. But I'm not gonna add them until some of these vegetables um, break down just a little bit. I'll probably add the spinach last. I'm gonna cook the macaroni separate, put that in there, and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna put the lid on this. I'm gonna get all the things ready for the turkey meatball so I can show you how to do that. I'll be back. Okay, so we're back to do the meatballs. So a couple things I wanna tell you. I forgot to tell you, you put thyme, dried thyme in the soup, some lemon juice to make it perky, and now I'm gonna make the uh, meatballs. So basically, ground turkey meat, panko, salt and pepper, and some um, grated Parmesan cheese. That's it. So I did wash my hands in case you're wondering because I don't want to hear about it in the comments. So basically I am just, oh and some of my dried basil. I put some extra basil in there. 
So I'm just kind of smushing this together, just like that. And I want to show you something that I do. I try to make my life as easy as possible. Why? Because life is hard enough. I don't need it any harder. Okay, so it's all mixed up. As the panko with the wet turkey is gonna kind of expand, that'll hold it together. So let me tell you what I did. This is what the turkey came in. I washed it, in fact, it's still a little wet. And I'm not putting these in the soup right away. So what I'm going to do is put them back in this pan. I have a little cookie dough thing because I want little meatballs. So I'm gonna give myself a scoop, roll it around, Stick it in there, perfect. Because these are gonna go back in the fridge until I'm ready to put them in the soup. Probably within an hour and a half, because the soup is on high. So those vegetables will start to cook down. And then I can put these in, because there'll be more room then. And this is great, using the cookie thing is a great way to make it consistent. Would my grandmother have done this? My sweet Italian grandmother? No. And she wasn't that sweet. She was, she could be crotchety if she wanted to. So she would be sick. She would have probably said to me in Italian, get out of the kitchen, I don't want you in here. But it is what it is. She's gone a long time now. I'm sure she's in a better place. I'm sure she wouldn't want to be around to see what's going on right now. Okay, so I've got six, seven, eight meatballs already. I don't want you to have to sit and watch all this. So, I'm gonna finish off camera. I'll be right back using my knuckle. Okay, so there's about 24 of them, nice and small, and they will get a little smaller as they cook. So they'll be just about a mouthful. They're not ready to go in as I told you, so I'm going to cover them, put them back in the fridge. And so I'll take them out probably about 15 minutes before I'm gonna put them in the soup. I don't want them to break down. And I'll probably add the spinach at the same time when I add that. So the spinach can go in the fridge too. The only other thing I didn't add was fresh parsley, which I can add when I add that. And then keep in mind, you have to taste stuff um, put a little bit in at a time. You can always add more, you can't take out. And then trying to correct that balance is a pain in the neck. So, it's, uh, it took me 30 minutes to wash and cut and prep everything and to wait for the vegetables to sweat a little bit. And so it's time for me to go into the pool. And then when I get out of the pool, I'll probably pull these out and then put them back in put the meatballs in show you how to gently turn them into the in there so you don't break them up and then i may be able to show you the beets at that time it just depends on how ambitious i am <laughs> it's hot it's sunday i'm going back to work tomorrow so my phone's about to die so i'm gonna go plug it in jump in the pool and i'll be back to show you the rest Okay, I am gonna try and do this one-handed so I can get a good angle for you. So the vegetables are cooking down really nicely and I just put in the spinach and the parsley and I'm just stirring it up. Now, the next part is the meatballs, which have been out for a little while, just to kind of get them a little bit to room temperature. Okay, so before I add the meatballs, and they're gonna cook. I gotta taste it. You have to taste what you're cooking. So we just take a little bit. I have a little glass bowl here. I'm gonna let it cool a second. And I'm blowing it. Okay, could use a little bit more salt. I'm gonna let it go for just now. Let it cook a little bit more. And now I'm gonna add the meatballs. So let me show you. I'm gonna add them very gently, one at a time. And as I get a few in there, what I wanna do now 
is just kind of push those to the bottom really gently. I don't want them to break up. And then this is gonna cook for a couple more hours. I'll cook the pasta and then we can add it and we should be good. Getting a little full in there. Let's see. Now what I will have to do is when I come back, maybe in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I will have to kind of just move them around a little bit so they can cook on all sides. Get them under there. There we go, they're all under the water. Okay, we'll check you again. Okay, so I made the chicken salad. I didn't film that because you all know how to make chicken salad. So I'm going to can my pickled eggs. So if you've never done canning before, look at some of the videos, they're great online. Canning doesn't mean you have to do 25 jars at one time. I'm the only one who eats pickled eggs and beets, so I'm only making one jar. So I've got a wide mouth jar, because it's just easier to get the eggs out. And you can see I have the lid down there, sterilizing, the screw top, and my little, uh, I call it like my sieve, I don't know what you would call it. And then over here is the brine and the beets and the onions. So in here is half vinegar, half water, and some sugar. And that's it. Um, I don't put any spices in this, because when I eat my pickled eggs, I put salt and pepper on them. So this is what's gonna happen. As soon as this jar is sterilized, I'm gonna empty it out with my special instrument. So this is what you use to grab the hot things. I have my ladle, I have my little magnet, I have some vinegar, and I have my eggs all peeled and ready to go. Yeah, one of them didn't peel good. That's all right, I can still use it. So, um, and a piece of paper towel, which I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. So, right now, I'm just waiting for things to boil. I'll be right back. All right, you ready? Here's the best part. So you can see the jar is still hot. My brine and beets is still hot. I'm gonna take my eggs and I'm gonna throw them into the jar. Okay. Now, this little cute thing that I sterilized, you saw it in the hot water, is going right in there. And I'm going to take ladles full of the beets and put it right in there. And it's hot, so you need to be careful. I don't think I'm gonna get all these beets in here, which is fine, because I'm gonna just keep it in the fridge and make a, a beet salad. So, I want to put more, a little bit more brine in. Keep going. Okay, now, I'm gonna shake this a little bit, and I'm gonna shake this a little bit without trying to touch it, it's hot. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get air bubbles out and make room for those beets to go down. I can probably get a couple more in there. So let's see what we can get in there. And I wanna fill it to the top about a quarter of an inch from the lid, okay? And I know you probably can't see that, but there it is. Okay, so push all my vegetables under the water. Now I'm gonna take my sterilized top, turn it upside down, my ring, the ring doesn't have to be sterilized, but I like it, and I'm going to just tighten it hand tight, not like super tight, because it's going to expand and go. Now I'm going to go put it back in the water, this is my handy little thing, check that out, make sure there's no dogs behind me to trip over, ready, watch. So it's in the water bath. It's gonna stay in the water bath for about 15, 20 minutes. When I take it out of the water bath, I'm gonna set it on the countertop, let it cool, and as the hot air inside starts to cool, it creates a vacuum. So it's funny when I do a lot of jars and we're sitting watching TV and they start to cool, you'll hear like pop, 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 pop like popcorn. You're only gonna hear one pop. I don't even know if I'll get to 
get it on camera. I don't know, probably not. But that's how you know it's done. And then if you tap the top, then you, if it doesn't sound hollow, if it sounds hard, then you know it's sealed. And then it's just gonna stay there. So I was able to do that. I have a lot of beads left over. So what I might do is I might jar a small amount of it after this big one, because I only use a small pot. So that's the beets, pickled beets, eggs, syndrome. You saw the soup. Later on, I will show you a complete picture with the pasta in it. And that's it, I guess. Well, there it is, the completed soup. So the turkey balls came out perfect. They're soft, they're easy to cut. And the macaroni I put underneath, I didn't want to put it in the pot because I didn't want it to soak up all the liquid. So you take a scoop of macaroni, put the hot liquid on it. The carrots are perfect. The only thing this needs is some shaved Parmesan, just like that. And it's funny, it almost has like a cabbagey taste to it, but there's no cabbage in it, so I don't understand that. Um, so yeah, it turned out really good. It's light for summer. I'll show you the meatballs. You can cut it with your spoon. And they're perfect inside. And um, it's a light, easy meal. And then you can freeze it. And I'm going to have my second bowl. Thanks, guys.